Great. Hey, everyone. I'm Henrik, CEO of Purdue, and I'll be the host for today's episode. With me today is Peter Kappes, an OKR consultant, and we'll be talking about individual OKRs. Peter, could you tell us a bit about yourself and your journey with OKR? Hey, Henrik, thanks so much for having me. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, way back when my dad uh, had an original uh, Apple Mac and I discovered I could make little games on it and start writing code and building stuff. And uh, I just got really into <clears throat> uh, building things and writing code. And then as I got a bit older, I realized I could do a lot more as part of a team than I could individually. And that kind of led me into project management and, and program portfolio management kind of stuff. Um, I kind of discovered agile ways of working along the way and became an agile coach and started working with that. And uh, I think it was, it was in 2015, I was doing portfolio management uh, with the UK's government digital service and OKRs kind of appeared on my radar and they arrived at, at just the right time when we were going through a big spend review and trying to kind of uh, do a big round of business planning and looking at some budgeting. And it was just a really nice way of taking all the great agile stuff that was happening at Teams <clears throat> and kind of lift that up to a level of uh, organizational strategy. So um from that point, uh, I, I started. Uh, I did some work for the BBC. I uh, did some work for some investment banks and some nonprofits like Doctors Without Borders, uh, and uh, a whole wide variety of clients that I work with today. It's great. So you've you've realized that uh, you could achieve more with a team than as an individual. I think that's a great uh, learning and great insight for uh, the topic of this uh, of this talk that we'll be having today. Uh, but before we dive into that, I want to make sure that we align on the terminology to make sure that we and our audiences um, are on the same page regarding this. So Peter and I already briefly discussed this beforehand. Um, and when we talk about individual OKRs, we don't mean to talk about personal or personal development OKRs. Like personal OKRs, personal development OKRs, these are about improving and growing an individual. Um, that for us is out of scope. Like an example would be, um, I'd like to learn German, for example. Um, an individual OKR really is an OKR that is about the organization, is contributing to the organization. So it is about improving and growing the business. It's the same as any other OKR that you'll be setting inside your business. It's just that um, only one individual will be working on it. That brings me to the next point, uh, or the first point that I'd like to talk about. Um, and oftentimes companies think that a marketing OKR equals a marketing team OKR. Uh, so in the way that it's a marketing team level OKR. But Peter, can't an individual OKR also be about marketing and therefore be, be, be seen as a marketing OKR? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's, it really comes down to when we talk about marketing, uh, are we talking about marketing as a, as a topic, as an area of, of work and, and effort, or are we talking about a team called the marketing team? And uh, it also brings up an interesting point about teams versus work groups, I think, because if you have a, a group of people who are uh, working together, I think Christina Watke defined a team as a, a group of people with mutually accountable skills and uh, shared responsibility for um, for, for shared outcomes, something like that. But a work group, in contrast, is a group of individuals who are quite capable of, of doing their own thing, working on their own uh, sets of, of activities. So it's, it's nice, if you've gone through the trouble of establishing a marketing team, then yes, it probably makes sense to have a, a uh, marketing team set of OKRs. But if you have people or individuals working on marketing things, then uh, it's, it's sort of a, a topic of interest. Uh, and it's nice if you have a way of, of having both conversations. So you can bring people into a kind of team context, or you could say, yeah, I'm working on this individually, but this is the, the particular topic. Yeah. 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 The, um, um, so in, in, inside organizations, I think they, they, they organize their people by functional area or by topic. Um, so from, we've done a little research in this area. So what we've seen is that um, most organizations, when you talk about the, the business side, they would still have a marketing team, a sales team, a customer success team, kind of like follows, follows the, the funnel that customers go through. When you go through the product side of the business, then more and more organizations are switching to a cross-functional set up where they would have a designer, an engineer, and a product manager in one squad. And then they're not responsible um, for a step in the funnel, but they're responsible for a particular part of the, of the product. Yeah. Um, what we've learned while doing that research is that also when organizations are working cross-functionally, when organizations have these squads in place, these cross-functional teams are still permanent. We've only, we've, we've surveyed hundreds of organizations and only a very tiny percentage of those did have temporary cross-functional teams, mean, meaning that if they've identified a cross-functional OKR that 
a team got together just to work on that particular OKR. And when that OKR was finished, the team would dissolve again. Hmm. Um, so keeping in mind that um, the teams inside organizations are typically permanent, um, then oftentimes what we see at least, but tell, me, tell us about your experience, that also, that also comes together then with how they are setting OKR. So the team hmm. comes together and then they are setting OKRs together with that team. Um, and then I think if that's the process that most organizations follow, then the natural consequence of that is, is that the way people are organized inside these organizations are then also how the goals will be organized or will be set in these organizations. So if you have a group of marketing team people, you would also end up with a set of marketing OKRs. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, you make a really good point, which is that the uh, a lot of organizations are moving to this sort of cross-functional squad model, particularly for products. And uh, in, in a lot of high-performing orgs where I've had the privilege to work, the, the unit of delivery is the team. And the idea is that that's where the work happens. That's where you have the greatest impact on, on the, the company's biggest goals, the organization. Um, but that's not always the case. As you say, there are still some functions kind of around. And um, I think that's, that's kind of where, um, as an organization, if you've gone through the trouble of defining some teams, then you've already kind of mentally said, aha, uh, this is a logical grouping of people and skills to achieve some particular set of outcomes. And so in that context, it makes a lot of sense to use that thing called a team uh, and, and encourage them to have those hard conversations about, uh, about their goals together. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't really done that, if you have a loose kind of uh, more like a work group, like we talked about, then uh, in that case, yeah, maybe individual OKRs are a bit more appropriate, but you can rally people around specific themes or specific topics like marketing or customer acquisition or, you know, that, that sort of thing. So I think, um, yeah, it really kind of comes down to why an organization has put teams in place and, and what those teams are, are looking to, to deliver. The other thing I, I often say, I guess, is that uh, for me, OKRs are not a delivery framework. They are an alignment framework. And as such, the way they do that is by giving you uh, the ability to have really powerful, difficult conversations as a group. So, uh, you know, the power of OKRs is not even so much in the goals themselves, but in the, the kinds of conversations that you have with, with groups of people. And so in that context, if you do have a team, I think uh, it's, it's really nice for me at least to, to set uh, OKRs at that team level. But again, yeah. it's good if you have a work group setting, you can kind of, um, it's nice to be able to accommodate both, I think. Yeah, yeah I like that. So yeah, this is, this is also related to, uh, I, I never really understood the, the topic of a team level and an individual level OKR. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I also wrote an article uh, a while back that there is no such thing as an, as an individual OKR or the effect mm -hmm. that, that they don't matter. Because if you, set, if you sit together with your marketing team, if you sit together with your sales team, and you start thinking about the OKRs um, that you should be tackling, um, mm -hmm. then I think when you set OKRs, it's often not clear yet whether only one individual will be able to achieve it or whether you need other people from across the organization or from inside your team to help you achieve that OKR. Hmm. So, for, uh, so for me at that point, it doesn't really matter whether it will be one or multiple people working on it. What matters is that I would want to have a view where I can look at all the marketing goals and I can look at all the sales goals. So the way we've organized that in Purdue is um, you can set up groups, the same as that you set up groups in your organization. So you, you use groups or teams inside your organization in order to organize all the different people that you have. And you do that then by organizing them by functional area or organizing them by particular parts of the product that they are responsible for. And mm -hmm. uh, so the same you do in Purdue, uh, you set up groups to help you organize the goals that you'll be having. So you can have all your marketing goals in one place and you can have all your sales goals in one place. That's how we help you organize your goals. And when you're looking at all your sales goals or all your customer success goals, uh, OKRs, then for me, it doesn't really matter whether it's one or multiple people working on it. Mm. So this is why I often felt that the discussion about individual OKRs was a bit redundant because is it really that important? But on mm. the other hand, um, I also did read your article about don't use individual OKRs. So now that we've established a bit about how you organize your goals inside an organization and how the organizations are setting goals, mm. um, if you do want each and every individual um, within a particular team, for example, to have their own OKR that they can be solely working on, there mm. are certain consequences, what I've read from, from your article. So maybe, um, maybe you can explain a bit about 
why you wrote that article and what are the downsides of having each individual inside a team having one or multiple OKRs that they are working on? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, it came up for me, it, it's interesting what you say about uh, whether there even are team OKRs or, 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 um, uh, or individual OKRs. And it, I think it, it really depends who you ask for the OKRs, right? If you go to an individual and say, what are your OKRs? You're going to get things from a very individual kind of perspective. If you go to a team and say, what are your OKRs? Then you're kind of, in essence, forcing that team to have a conversation together about what they're going to deliver uh, altogether. And I think when... Uh, when, when I first wrote that article, it was because I was getting, um, you know, it's, it's a bit controversial and, and I'm less strict on it now. But at the time, I had a lot of clients who were looking to use OKRs as a, as a framework for doing personal performance management, uh, which is problematic for a lot of reasons. And um, I think the other thing is that if you have a group of people trying to act as a team, but they're actually focused on doing individual things, it sounds like maybe what you experienced uh, early on in Purdue of, of um you know, you have a, this proliferation of individual goals and it's kind of hard to see where the focus is. And um, it also means, you know, OKRs should help you to decide what to do on a daily basis. They should really guide your, your actions. So if I'm in a cross-functional squad or, or some kind of a team, if I have personal OKRs and if I have uh, a, a backlog of things that my team is meant to be delivering, I'm going to put more emphasis on my personal OKRs and trying to deliver those because they have a greater relevance to my own personal context. And so what happens, I've seen in some cases, you have individuals worrying about themselves. Uh, and in extreme cases, it can actually pull the team apart because you have people kind of doing their own thing, looking after themselves uh, and, um, and not really coming together to, to worry about what the, the team is responsible for. You know, you might have a manager who feels like they're responsible for the team's OKRs, but individually people, there's a risk that they're kind of pulling in, in opposite directions. Um, the other thing is, you know, if, if I know that my, my bonus or my, my performance rating hangs on my OKRs, I'm going to set the bar as low as possible on that probably. I mean, that's, that's sort of human nature. Um, and, and as such, you know, I, I might kind of tune out on the, uh, the team OKRs and, and really just pursue my, my individual ones. So I started to see some of those kinds of issues, uh, which really led me to, to think that the more valuable conversations you could have were at a team level, because it kind of forces you to, to, um, do all that negotiating really upfront. And the nice thing is if you, if you do that as part of the OKR setting process, then you still have time and resource to kind of correct things and, and align during the quarter. Uh, if you just set some individual OKRs and kind of ignore the team piece, uh, then you likely won't realize that things have, have gone off track until quite late in the, in the quarter, if you haven't done that negotiation. Yeah. So that's, that's why I started to, to write that. Yeah, I, I totally agree to it because I also see like when organizations um, are talking about individual OKRs, I think that the conversations that you'll be having when setting OKRs is mm. um, uh, what are the OKRs that Mark should be working on and what are the OKRs that Peter should be working on and what should Hendrik's OKRs be? And I think when you do OKRs, these are not the valuable conversations that you should be having, right? Like you just said exactly. before that a big benefit of OKR is having like very valuable conversations about like, what are the things that we should be focusing on? What are the priorities? Hmm. Um, and I think the opposite happens when, when organizations are setting individual OKRs. So I think exactly. it's much more valuable for, for, for teams to get together and say like, okay, what are the few, the three or four big topics that we need to address with our team in the next quarter, mm -hmm. uh, instead of having a conversation around like, hey, we have <laughs> Peter here now, he needs to be responsible for a few things. So what should his OKRs be? Right. And if Peter leaves the organization and those were critical things to do, then suddenly the, uh, the team is in jeopardy. Whereas if you set them at a team level, then you have a greater chance to, uh, to, to kind of, uh, you have a bit more insurance. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 And I also think for, for organizing OKRs, um, that's more from a software perspective, of course. But mm -hmm. when, when our users are adding OKRs to our platform, it's really important for our platform to know what the OKR is about. Because if that OKR would live just on an individual user's page and the platform does not mm. know what, what topic it is addressing, then you'll end up with lots of OKRs living on many different user pages and no one has an overview anymore about like, hey, what, how's marketing doing? Like, hey, how, are, how is sales progressing? Like, you won't be able to see that. So yeah. for every OKR that you enter into our platform, you must always say what it is about, which group it is relevant for. 
Yeah, that's great. And I think also by by looking at that uh, and having that holistic view, I mean, this, this applies as well when you're setting team OKRs, is it allows you to say what you're not going to do and what's not a priority. And and that's much easier to do uh, at, a, at a team level or at a topic level than it is at an individual level, I think, because yeah. it, it allows you to have a lot more clarity and, and uh, gives the team ability to push back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. By the way, you also mentioned that uh, OKRs shouldn't be used for personal performance management, that that creates mm-hmm. other problems. I think that's a great topic to pick up in, a, in the next interview because I always <laughs> also find that really interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. It keeps coming up with, with the organizations that we're, that we're talking to. Yeah, same um, for me. <laughs> another thing that, that, you, that you read online when you search for topics like individual OKRs, um, there's a famous Spotify article that, uh, where Spotify announced that they've abandoned OKRB. And I think mm-hmm. the main reason that they pointed out is that it just created a huge administrative overhead. Uh, if yeah. you're thinking of an organization with a thousand people and you want every individual to end up with three to four OKRs each quarter, I mean, you can easily do the math how many OKRs your organization will have to set each quarter, would have to be updated, would have to be closed. It's, it easily mm-hmm. creates um, a mess, right? Yeah. Is, is there any, any, any relevant experience that you have from that respect? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think... Oh, go on. To, 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 to scope my question correctly, um, is that just related to company size? Because uh, I mean, we can take Spotify mm-hmm. as an example with three or 4,000 employees that they have, and then you can easily calculate the administrative overhead it would generate. But what, what if you have a 10-people organization? Would then individual OKRs make more sense? That's an interesting one. I, I think that in a 10-person organization, it's certainly easier. I mean, the, the sheer numbers are smaller. Um, you could probably get away with more individual OKRs because, yeah, in a 10, 10-person organization with, with a totally flat hierarchy, you would want you know, each person to have nine conversations with, with everybody else. Uh, so you know, what is that, 90 conversations? So um, it, it, whereas in a thousand person organization, again, if it's totally flat, you wouldn't have a totally flat thousand person organization, but you're, you're asking every person to talk with every other person in the organization as they set and try to align their OKRs. And as you say, it's kind of a mess. Um, I think what's more, what's coming back to this idea of teams, what's interesting is, yeah, are you, are you a work group in your 10 person company where you can just kind of rely on all 10 people to make some sensible decisions and, and do some good stuff and you check in with each other and make sure that you're each individually doing the right stuff to, to get where you want to go? Or uh, are you trying to set some, some company-wide OKRs? Are you starting to form some little groups, some, uh, some, some topics or some teams and saying, well, actually the three or four of us can work together on this particular topic, whether it's a product thing, a marketing thing or whatever. Uh, so I think naturally things will kind of organically evolve towards those teams. Uh, but yeah, I think just in terms of the sheer numbers, there, there are, it's a lot of accounting to do. You know, you can delegate that down to managers and things to have those conversations. If, if you look at something, um, if you look at the span of control, that, that number of, you know, how many direct reports yeah. does the average manager have? Um, as long as that's not huge, then you could argue that, yes, there's, there's enough bandwidth to set some individual OKRs and have those conversations. But uh, I still think that even in a, in a large organization with a small span of control, uh, the maintaining the relevance of all those individual OKRs to other people in the organization will, will get a bit, um, yeah, you're not going to get a very good return on that investment, I don't think. I think you'll get a better return on the investment of looking at the OKRs at a, at a team level, even in that, that context. Yeah, yeah, and I agree, I agree to that. The, um, so one thing that, I mean, speaking from experience here, when we were building Purdue, yeah. um, you, you could be as small as, as, as two or three people, um, but the different areas that you need to tackle with that small mm. group of people is still the same. You still need to build up marketing. You still need to acquire leads. You still need to build up sales. You need to convert yep. those leads to customers. You still need customer success to make them successful. You still need to build a product. You need engineering. Mm-hmm. And so I think in that, in that respect, um, yes, you are a much smaller team, um, but all the areas that you need to cover is still the same. So I would say the same logic still applies there. You need to, you need to set some OKRs uh, for marketing. You need to set some OKRs for sales. You need to set some OKRs for customer success. And when you're smaller, um, there's only probably only one or a few people that can be working on those OKRs, which means mm-hmm. that naturally is, there's only one person that can work on it. So naturally it follows from that, that it's an individual OKR. Yes. But I think most importantly, it's like, it's a marketing OKR and it's a sales OKR and organizing them that way, I think still makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The, um, so the topic of individual OKRs, I mean, there's this clear downsides if there's, there's more and more is being written about it. And I think this, especially large organizations are uh, sometimes writing articles that now also they have abandoned individual OKRs. B, 
be it because they want to stay away from combining OKRs with people performance management or be it for the administrative overhead that they create. Hmm. Um, do you have some insight into why some organizations are still looking today to use individual OKRs? Well, I, I do think, uh, I mean, the, the sort of cynical answer is that it is kind of a, a way of rebranding traditional performance management and saying, oh, okay, it's just, it's just a different uh, acronym to use and, and we'll have some measurable outcomes and hold people to account that way. Um, I, I think that also plays into, if, if you have a kind of top-down command and control organizational style, uh, you can try to apply OKRs that way. I mean, the, the kind of classic, you know, the classic John Doerr example of the American football team of, of having all those OKRs really rigidly cascading very tightly. Yeah. <laughs> um, it looks very attractive from a, from a kind of traditional top-down management structure, but I think it's, um, it's, it's, uh, as you were saying before we started the call, it, it's almost like a fancy way of doing project management. Uh, and you know, if, if a key result needs to be measurable and an objective needs to be big and inspiring, then you can't really take one team's key result and turn it into an objective for someone else. So I think um, that if you take it to its extreme, kind of it, you end up with individual goals. Um, so I think a, a more optimistic answer for why, team, why companies are, are looking to do that, I think is that uh, there is this idea that it empowers individuals a little bit more. It helps them to see how their work fits into the big picture. Um, it maybe gives them a little more control on what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a bad aspiration. I think for a lot of organizations, just the, the thrill of seeing what everybody is working on and what kind of metrics they're going to use to measure success is kind of new, uh, especially if they're not used to working in kind of cross-functional agile sort of teams where you have, uh, you know, clear um, incremental or sorry, iterative delivery with frequent touch points and, and um, demos and things like that. Having individual OKRs might feel like a nice way to get more visibility into what's going on. Um, okay. So I think that might be one of the drivers. Okay. Hmm. Peter, it was great to, uh, to share some thoughts with you on this, uh, on this topic. Uh, and I think the, the things you shared with us are really valuable for, um, for our audiences. Before we, before we end the interview, are there any, is there anything that you would, uh, that you could recommend to organizations that do want to set OKRs uh, on the individual level as well? Yeah, I think it can certainly work. It, it can work well, but I think you do, you do need to do it with care. You need to be really careful about um, understanding what you're really trying to measure with those individual OKRs, if it's about performance, if it's about uh, contribution, if it's actually to help you as an organization to deliver. Um, and I think it also helps to look at your organization structure and figure out where do you have teams uh, where do you have work groups? Are those teams cross-functional or are they more kind of areas of practice, um, topics, that kind of thing? And I think if you want to use individual OKRs for things like performance management, again, we could have a whole conversation about that, but it's, um, you know, it, it's fine for it to be one input into that conversation, but it, it shouldn't be the entire input into that conversation. Uh, you know, it's, it's much more about uh, having those those regular sort of feedback uh, sessions and, and and touch points, so I think they they can be useful. They can give you a lot of clarity if you haven't had that before. Uh, but but do them yeah uh, exercise care and and kind of figure out why you why you want them and um, and you know inspect and adapt. Try it out. See if it's giving you the benefits that you were looking for, and be prepared to kind of pivot and adjust as you go. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Peter, for joining us in this episode today. Uh, I think you already brought up two new topics that we could address in, <laughs> in the next interview. One being uh, why you should or should not combine OKR with people performance management. Uh, and the other one talking about the cascading of OKRs that John Dover is promoting in his book, Measure What Matters, mm -hmm. and uh, why that could or could not uh, work for organizations. So thanks again. Thanks for joining us and uh, happy holidays. Let's reconnect <laughs> in the new year to, uh, to schedule another interview. Sounds great. Thanks for having me, Henrik. All the best. Ciao. Bye. Hi. At Purdue, our commitment has always been to help organizations grow faster and become successful with OKR, which is why we offer our content for free. We've decided to go one step further and make our software free as well. Our free plan includes all core functionality and allows you to track an unlimited number of goals. Head over to Purdue.com to set up your own free Purdue account.